The problem is we always overthink too much. We choose unhappiness over uncertainty. Now, what does that mean? It means that we are so comfortable with failure because we know what it looks like. Most of us, I'm saying most of us, are so comfortable with failure because our mind that has 65 million years of evolution tells us to remain safe. Remain safe means doing what we do or what we know. But that also means not trying new things, which also means that you're never going to try something you're uncertain at, which means that failure is guaranteed. So is unhappiness. So we choose fear of failure mm -hmm. over fear of uncertainty and self-doubt whispers uncertainty and it creates in the moment what looks less frightening is to choose unhappiness meaning let's not do anything and it causes paralysis and paralysis means it's guaranteed failure all of this means you might as well give it a shot and try because you will succeed. Hey friends, welcome to Right Off Track, your favorite entrepreneurial resource where we dive into the mindset, strategy, and purpose of entrepreneurs around the world who are sharing their real stories and insights with you. I believe that we all have a unique purpose in life and that embracing our unique and special journey will help uncover that. If this helps you on your journey, I so welcome your support as we grow and improve this channel. Join us, subscribe. I promise you I'm fully dedicated to making this work better every step of the way. So share your feedback, subscribe, share for a friend, and let's go on this adventure together right off track. Enjoy this episode. Going off track is taking a chance on yourself. Following your poles of curiosity. It's making your own decisions. The most wonderful adventure. Hey friends, Anya Smith here. Today's podcast is all about conquering self-doubt, embracing abundance, and revitalizing your mindset. We'll dive into a powerful story of transformation from the brink of despair to becoming a beacon of conscious leadership. Join us for an episode filled with practical wisdom for leading a fulfilled life. And now meet our inspired guest, Gagan Gupta, who's on the mission to inspire 10,000 individuals to reach their full potential. Gagan, excited to have you here. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Anya. It's my pleasure as well. And just for our listeners, where in the world are you? I'm in Melbourne, Australia. So the other end of the world than you. <laughs> I love that. I love the entrepreneurship connects people all around the world. And your story is also amazing because you are no stranger to life's changes and pivots. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about the different career choices you've made and what inspires you right now? Sure. So um, as Anya said, I'm Gagan Gupta. Anya, my story started, uh, my career started when I came to Australia in 2003 to do my master's MBA in finance. And after I finished my study, I um, looked for work and I got a sales job. And in two months, I got promoted. That's when I found out my love for sales, selling. Mm -hmm. And then 21 years fast forward and seven promotions later, I find myself as a senior executive um, taking businesses from $50 million to half a billion dollars in operations, managing Ooh. people across different countries, not only just different states. And then um, you talked about changes and then something hit me in 2018 where I felt a lot of shame, guilt and fear, but I didn't know where it is coming from, right? And it left a void in my in my heart. So it kept it kept increasing. And what started happening is I started picking up fights hmm. with people for no reason. I didn't realize it at the time. Now I do. And then in two, in twenty I think in um at the end of twenty twenty or early twenty twenty one, I left my job and uh in search for more money because I thought more money would make you happier. So um, I got a very big role and I uh, left my job and the new job had the same set of problems, right? Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. In six months, I left that job as well. And never ever in my life have I worked under three years at any mm -hmm. role. If you check my LinkedIn, it's mm -hmm. a minimum of two and a half, three years. But that role, because I was feeling something is missing, I resigned in six months. And then again, a new role, 
better role, more money. And I thought, okay, well, this time it's going to be all good, all great, more money. So that happened for the best. And then the same thing happened, only worse. And this time the company folded. And the worst part is I called out four people, four friends of mine who had families with little kids who were in secure jobs. And I called them out to come and work for me with this great company, mm. with this um, uh, new company, a startup. Even though they had seven other established businesses, this particular company under that larger umbrella was a mm. new startup. And within two weeks of me hiring these four people, and I'd been in this role for three months myself only, right? Okay. Actually, not six months, just three months. And within two to four weeks of hiring all these four people, the company folded. Mm. Wow. And the CEO rang me with the chief operations officer to say, can you ring all these four people and tell them that they don't have a job anymore? Wow. I tell you what, Anya, I could have handled myself. But when you talk about responsibility of other people losing their income because of you, it's beyond gut-wrenching. Even talking about it now makes my mm. spine chill, right? Mm. Um, and to deliver that news, and two of them were close friends. I lost friendship over this. As a result, I went into depression. Mm. Um, anxiousness came first, <clears throat> and then depression, and then I even had suicidal attempts. Mm. Four, on four different occasions. Wow. So it was a deep, deep, deep uh, and dark time in my life. So <laughs> that's what happened. And then to finish um, answering your question and closing the loop on that one, I then found someone through someone, someone came into my life for five minutes and said, hey, have you spoken to this person? And then that's how my personal development journey restarted. And I remembered that when I was 13 years of age, I was reading spiritual books. I was doing mm -hmm. yoga. I was a yoga teacher. I was teaching numerology, astrology, palmistry to myself, reading books. And mm -hmm. I used to read all the personal development books at the time. Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, even the Stoics, Marcus Aurelius, you name it. And I was reading it, but I'd just forgotten. And not just forgotten for a few weeks or a few months or a few years. I'd forgotten that I was a PD junkie for a good 30 years. And it all came back to me a year and a half ago when I was um, battling my depression. And then I found this program, one program led to another program, and it led to the self-realization that the void I've been feeling is because I need to serve others more powerfully. Mm. Therefore, I took the path of coaching. And I became, um, thankfully to the person who coached me for my first program, the one after depression, I started coaching her program as in, teaching others that program. And then that led me into my own one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I became mm -hmm. an executive career coach, given my own executive background. Mm -hmm. And then I became a business coach. And right now I'm helping both corporates and senior executives to get abundance and reignite their passion. Mm -hmm. That's my story in a nutshell. Wow. I am so touched by just the depth of the experience you had to go through and thank you for authentically sharing the low points of that as well and it's amazing how you were able to reflect and find this connection with yourself again and find a purpose to help others throughout this darkness i'm curious what were some of the big takeaways that you have now looking back you know like what were some signs that like something was missing and if somebody is maybe starting to see these signs within themselves, what advice would you give them in the, you know, instead of trying to find more money? Like what would we actually help them to um, have a more productive way of dealing with these things if you could give them advice? I would say the first thing that jumped up to me right now, Anya, as we were talking and asking that question mm -hmm. is listen to yourself and listen to your body. You know, I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable over here. Mm -hmm. This is something I realized literally yesterday. And you and your viewers are going to be the second people on the planet to find this out. Mm. 
Uh, the first thing is you um, really, really, really need to listen to yourself. For me, my body was asking for a break. Now get this. I'm, I'm just keeping it real, right? Mm-hmm. I did not take a break between 2003 and 2021 except one holiday. And I wow. didn't even realize that. 2nd of August, 2013, I went to see my brother in London and I went to um, Barcelona, Spain, Paris, London. Mm-hmm. And that was a three-week holiday except that holiday. I went to India a couple of times, but that was for work purposes. And I just mm-hmm. utilized my weekends to meet my family. However, a proper, proper holiday, mm-hmm. one three-week holiday in 20 years. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> you you wow. got to do it for yourself. You, you got to listen. I was just working, 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 right? Mm-hmm. And we all have some shame, guilt, or fear that's stored in us, either through childhood experiences or even some experiences that we feel or experience as adults, which are never processed. I'm going to share one of them with you, with your permission. Of course, of course. And this is me being completely vulnerable in a public forum, something I realized just yesterday. In fact, a couple of days ago, I was brushing my teeth and it hit me like a rock. For the last six months, I've been feeling some shame, guilt and fear, but I didn't know what it was. It's a mental Mm -hmm. block, right? And I need to do something to grow my business, but I've been procrastinating. Surprise, surprise, right? And I didn't know for that particular aspect, and I didn't know what it is. And I've been journaling. I've been listening to myself. I've been taking breaks and um, just walking in nature, just, just the things I love. And it's to say that there's no guarantee that what your block is will come to you in one day or one week or one year or one month. You just got to keep at it. For me, it came in my month seven. So, and the shame and guilt was when my mother visited me when I just came to Australia in February of 2003, and she visited me in July of 2003 to spend her time with me because it was my birthday. Mm. For all the wrong reasons, I did not spend mm-hmm. enough time with her. In fact, mm-hmm. I asked my friends to spend time with her and take mm-hmm. her place. I could have taken her. I could have spent time with her, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into the reasons why or how, because that's all um, separate detail. However, the important thing is the shame and guilt mm-hmm. was that I just didn't spend enough time with her. So that hit me like a rock, Anya, that the, the feeling, and you know, when I, when I think about it, that feeling used to come every month, every week, mm-hmm. every year. I just didn't think too much of it. It just came and went because I was so busy doing stuff. But it just goes to show that when, to show it, when you actually process your emotions properly, and I processed it yesterday, so I've... I actually have a forgiveness coach. So mm-hmm. I have a um, I have a coach for myself, one-on-one coach and a group coach to help me grow because I think that coaches who believe in coaching others <laughs> need to have a coach themselves. Otherwise, you're basically saying, I don't believe in coaching, right? <laughs> so right. Um, I've got a couple of coaches, but I also have a forgiveness coach who actually teaches me how to forgive yourself. Hmm. How to forgive yourself, this is key, three things. And this is how I processed my emotion yesterday. How to forgive yourself, how to forgive the other person in your mind, even if there was nothing to forgive. But if you think they're at fault, you need to forgive them in your mind because your mind needs to believe that Hmm. you've forgiven them. And the third thing is you need to give them permission to forgive you. Hmm. And I processed this yesterday yesterday. And can I just share with you, Anya, I felt the biggest aha or the biggest ha ah, relief mm. I've ever felt in my life. And then what followed was two hours of work and I pumped out enough work in two hours that I normally would do in a week. Wow. So we're learning every day. And as I said before, you and your viewers are first to learn about the shame, guilt and fear in me. And I guess the fear is that 
uh, or the fear was that it will never be processed. Mm. And I cannot ex express that feeling except for saying it's like a, it's like 60 kilos of emotional baggage getting released from your body, right? In the form of balloons or, or whatever. You can think about whatever expression to make you feel better, but mm. you feel so light after that. Oh, my God, I've been storing that up. So 2003 and now we're in 2024 for almost 21 years, Anya. Wow. Wow. I appreciate you sharing that not only because of, you know, the vulnerability and the importance of self-reflection, but to me personally, it gives me hope to be transparent. I can so relate to so much of what you're saying. Like we started our journeys very similarly in terms of timeline. So again, about seven months ago, and I still feel like this uh, pinch in my back. It's actually like right kind of in my back area and it's an energetic thing. So when I'm sitting down and I just feel that and I can't quite get to what it's at, you know, I'm giving it space. I'm asking what it wants. I'm like going outside and doing all the things I don't think, and I'm still not quite there yet. And so I appreciate you giving me hope. It is, you know, I'm like forgiving everything and everybody and loving everything. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. And that's okay. I think it takes time, right? You have to honor the process yeah. and being open to things coming. So thank you for uh, giving me and hopefully our listeners who maybe are having that sense of weightedness, the hope that, hey, it will come in time and there's this process of forgiveness for yourself and for whatever needs to be forgiven. And that, that what happens after that, that beautiful moment that you shared with us. As I said, I just uh, pumped out a lot of work, which I hadn't, mm. I was procrastinating for a good mm. six months. And yeah. I got a call from, so it's working on a workshop. We've done mm -hmm. a couple of webinars together. Um, and we are working on a workshop where there's nothing to buy, even if you wanted to, it's just giving value <laughs> to people. And yeah. um, we, and I, and I'm not a copywriter. Yeah. I'm just not, <laughs> I'm not a copywriter. <laughs> However, I, I wrote a six email sequence for people who are going to register for this workshop for them to yeah. get emails, to nurture them, to share with them what the workshop is going to be about just to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. And um, when my um, business coach turned sales coach friend read the email, he just left a voice note for me on WhatsApp saying, Gagan, this is extraordinary. Wow. Where did that come from? And he wow. said to me, this is yesterday. And he said to me, can I actually use some of that copy for my own website and my <laughs> own um, collateral? I'm like, sure. It's a collaborative right. effort. But I've never had anyone say to me that you've written an extraordinary copy before. Wow. Now, I can't help put together the two instances together because an emotional release combined with me pumping out quality work, let's just say, I know it's only a very small sample of one person, mm -hmm. but it still is because I greatly respect this person. He's an authority in his field. Mm -hmm. He's got 15 years of experience, and he's telling me that you wrote an extraordinary copy, and he's paying copywriters thousands of dollars <laughs> to write copy for his website and um, lead magnet and whatnot. And he's telling me mm -hmm. this copy is one of the best I've ever, ever read. You know, mm -hmm. to me, um, it's, it's not a coincidence because it just goes to show that when you work really, really free and in your mm -hmm. element, then you can produce, uh, even, even ordinary people can produce extraordinary stuff. You know, I, think I, 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 I hope that was a question and I answered it. Yes. Can I add to that? A, I think everybody who is, does amazing things is extraordinary. I mean, <laughs> they are all ordinary people who, yes. who are embracing their fuller selves, who are curious about their full potential. And that's really what makes them extraordinary in the long run. Would you have advice for anybody like me who is sensing, yes, I'm holding something. I'm sensing that tightness. What advice would we give for them to get to a place like where you were yesterday? It's a great question, Anya. And I've actually written something down. Uh, I'm going to read it. This is not only for you or the question you ask. This actually applies to everybody. Yeah. And I'm going to say to your viewers, if they pay attention, they might get something out of it. Um, this comes from a video uh, from Earl Nightingale. 
as we're going back decades. And he said something to the tune of the architect of the universe didn't create a stairway leading nowhere. Mm. I'm going to repeat that one more time. The architect of the universe didn't create a stairway leading nowhere. Mm. Even the Bible talks about this to Mm -hmm. yield. Now the Bible says, yield yourself to God, but for people who believe in higher power universe, I'm going to say, if you're thinking of doing something, just do it and trust a higher power. The -hmm. problem is we always overthink too much. We choose unhappiness over uncertainty. Now, Mm -hmm. what does that mean? It means that we are so comfortable with failure because we know what it looks like. Most of us, I'm saying most of us are so comfortable with failure because our mind that has 65 million years of evolution tells us to remain safe. Remain safe means doing what we do or what we know. But that also means not trying new things, which also means that you're never going to try something you're uncertain at, which means that failure is guaranteed. So is unhappiness. So we choose fear of failure. Mm -hmm. over fear of uncertainty and self-doubt whispers uncertainty and it creates um, in the moment what looks less frightening is to choose unhappiness meaning let's not do anything Mm. and it causes paralysis and paralysis means it's guaranteed failure Mm. all of this means you might as well give it a shot and try because you will succeed I was conducting a session with a group a couple of weeks ago, uh, Anya, and someone asked me a question, and I just put it back to them. I said, if you were me, how would you answer? And they Mm -hmm. said, I'm not a coach. I'm not conducting this session. I don't know. I said, okay, why don't you try? The question you just asked me, if you were to answer or try answering the question, and believe me, Anya, everybody Mm -hmm. was just stumped because he gave a five-minute response that he even didn't believe he just gave or recorded. Mm-hmm. And I then asked the audience, the other five people, I asked, so what do you think of his response? And they were mm-hmm. gobsmacked. They had to pick up their jaw from the ground. <laughs> this guy didn't believe himself. Right. And I knew it beforehand. And that's why I said to him, do you mind attempting to answer that question yourself? And then magic happened. And that's what happens when you try. So you've heard the story of 7-Up, the drink. No. Okay. So oh, I know a drink. <laughs> everyone knows a drink, but yeah. how did it get the name Seven Up? Now, this chemist or physicist who was trying to create a formula to um, uh, get to a formula something like Coca Cola, but he failed mm-hmm. the first six times. So he got um, demotivated and he actually sold the formula to another company. Mm-hmm. And this company called their physicist and said, let's try one more time to get the formula right. And they did seven attempts, seven up. It Mm -hmm. went up overnight. It was a success, right? So that story goes to show that you're usually five minutes away from success when you give up. Mm -hmm. So do not give up. Trust the universe. That's my own story. For my first nine months in coaching, Mm -hmm. there was zero income. I was quite shameful of that to admit, Mm -hmm. but not anymore. Because Mm -hmm. everything takes time. And in that nine months, everyone around me kept saying, go back to your full-time job. Go back to your full-time job. Find someone, something stable. And guess what? I followed my intuition and now I'm a six-figure coach. Mm -hmm. In a very small amount of time from what I've been told. Right. Right. If I had listened to them, I wouldn't have pursued my, my passion. This was the void that was following me in 2018. So going back to your viewers and you answering your question is just go for it. Just do it. Listen Mm -hmm. to your heart. Our bodies and our minds are talking to us all the time. I proved it to a client once and he said to me, I want to die. I said, okay, Mm -hmm. hold your nose and Mm -hmm. make make sure your mouth is, your lips are sealed. Seven seconds, Anya. (laughs) After seven seconds, he was like, (gasps) yeah. Right. The body wants to live. Right. The body wants to live. Listen to your body and listen to your heart. 
It's guiding you all the time. We mm -hmm. just need to listen to it. The other thing I've, list, I've written down, and this is uh, closing the loop on your on your question that you asked me, uh, the advice for you, there's, there's six steps I follow. Yeah. The first step is define your goal. Mm -hmm. Be very clear. For example, be very clear about what you want to achieve in 2024. Do not worry if you can achieve it or not. Because if you're worrying, I'm going to explain the science behind, if you've got a minute. If you're worrying, what you're saying is, I'm going to fail. And if you say, I'm going to fail, are you living in the present or are you living in the future? Future. Uh huh. So when you're living in the future, how can you achieve anything in the present? Mm. So that's why all this talk about being the now, being the now, I'm explaining that at a deeper level. Mm. Right? People say, I'm going to fail or I don't know if I'll be successful. But what you got to think about is you're placing yourself in the future. You are transporting or teleprompting yourself into the future and saying something you don't even know is going to happen because we're not God. Yeah. We're not a higher power. We're not the universe. But in doing that, you think you are. And you place an outcome in your mind that hasn't happened. You bring that outcome into your present. You, you repeat that outcome to yourself over and over and over again until that person's reality changes. Therefore, their personality changes. Mm. So we need to define a goal now. Do not worry about whether you're going to hit it. And you might as well aim for big. I had a client last year, uh, we wrote down a figure she would achieve in 2023. And this is on the 11th of January, I keep extensive notes, on the 11th yeah. of January 2023, Anya, we wrote a figure she's going to achieve, and I said mm -hmm. add 20%. Okay. I should have said go double, but I said add 20%. <laughs> yeah. We just spoke last week, mm -hmm. uh, and on the 11th of January 2024, she released the figures she achieved in 2023, and the figure was $3,000 US more than the figure wow. we wrote down. Wow. At the time when we wrote the figure, we had no idea how we were going to achieve it. Right. So define your goal. There is magic in writing. The second thing I would say is quit running yourself down. Stop cutting your own legs. Right. I'm not saying stop all the negative thoughts because we can't. There's 60 to 70,000 thoughts today. Right. Most of the negative. I'm just saying, do not let it get to you because mm -hmm. you know how someone says to you, you're a naughty girl and you're seven <laughs> years of age, but that <laughs> stays with you for a life. Yeah. The program I'm telling you that I started my coaching career with teaching others. That's my coach's comment that she had from mm -hmm. her teacher. And that lived with her for 40 years wow. until she until she created this program. So she first healed herself, and now she's healing the world. But that's just telling you how childhood trauma plays in our mind. Even that's right. just a sentence. Now, that teacher wouldn't even remember, but she's played that sentence in her mind for 40 years, Anya. Right. So you've got to quit running yourself down. The third step is stop thinking of all the reasons you cannot be successful and start thinking about the all the reasons you can be. Mm -hmm. So everyone knows Tony Robbins, his life changed. This is on YouTube. His mm -hmm. life changed when he went from, I can't do it, I can't afford it, to how can I? Mm -hmm. It's a simple change of question. The fourth step is go back to your childhood and think about when was the first time you felt shame, guilt, or fear. Mm -hmm. Feel the emotion. You know, we all heard of Bill Gates, but few people have heard of Paul Allen. Paul Allen coached a guy named, we're going to call him uh, John, because I don't mm -hmm. want to reveal his identity. So Paul Allen, a billionaire who founded Microsoft mm -hmm. with Bill Gates, coached Paul um, uh, coached this co guy we're going to call John. And I had one session in January of last year with this guy, John. Mm -hmm. and He shared with me Paul Allen's trick. Every morning, Paul Allen wakes up and says, I'm going to do the thing I fear the most. Hmm. Bring me the biggest and the baddest challenge, and let's tackle that head on. Hmm. What do we do normally? We run away. Right. And what happens? The fear multiplies. All the things we've just discussed. It multiplies, and it stores in our body and our mind and our heart, and that's the voice that keeps telling us, be safe, don't do anything. Right. But if you face your fear... 
you're literally maybe minutes or hours away from a breakthrough. That's what mm -hmm. happened to me yesterday. I processed my emotions. I had a choice. When I shared that story with you about my mother, I had a choice yesterday of not processing my emotions and again, just ignoring them and moving on. Mm -hmm. What do you think would happen? They would still be locked up. The more we think we're in control and ignoring, the more we're actually bottling it. We're not really controlling it. We're just bottling up. So it's like, oh, that's I'll right. be there for eating for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, step number five is write the description of the person you want to become. Mm. I cannot stress how important this is. I wrote down 18 months ago the kind of person I become. Every night before I go to sleep, I ask myself, am I becoming that person? How closer am I? What are the things I did today that brought me being closer to that person? And what are the things that I shouldn't be repeating because they took me away from being that person? Okay. And the last step is act being that person every day. So I'm just going to quickly repeat all the six steps for your viewers, Anya. Okay. And, and um, <clears throat> hopefully this answers your question. The first is define your goal. Second step is quit running yourself down. The third step is stop thinking about all the reasons you cannot be successful and start thinking about all the reasons you can be. This also means you just write down all your accomplishments so far because we keep thinking about what we can't do. Mm -hmm. How about you keep a list of what you've done so far, which is great. Number four, hit, number four is childhood trauma or beliefs that have caused mm -hmm. you to feel shame, guilt, or fear. Go back in time and remember what it was and process those emotions. Feel them, express them, write them down. Number five is write a description of the person you want to become. And the sixth is act being that person every day. So beautiful. When you were saying this, I sensed this in my heart, a little bit of this fear creeping like, oh, and it's so interesting because I, I truly believe on this entrepreneurial journey, there's more fear around our higher potential than about being safe. Like we, we feel very comfortable being complacent or being, you know, where we are, but when we really imagine that we can have this full potential, it's the fear is holding us back. And it's this ego that again, when, when we truly uncover ourselves, we have to face our ego. We have to face like all these fears and realize that, um, they're not, they're more illusion and myth than reality. And so to your point, a lot of times we avoid fear or even, I think there's this opposite side of like, you know, just, you know, don't worry about it, you know, fake it till you make it. But I think you have to go through the fear to your point. We can't just bubble it up. Um, it's not a path around it. It's a path through it that leads to that healing. And along this path, you know, that we talked about describing the, the way you want to be being that person, how how, what, excuse me, what advice would you give to people around being able to trust that that transformation is possible? Because a lot of times, like that's something I, I struggle with every day and I lean into it, as I was mentioning that trusting that this vision of myself, this grander self, this big aspiration is real. And it's not just a figment of my imagination. It's not, again, my grand ego saying like, oh, sure, you can be this big person changing the world. Sure. Who are you? Um, and I have to check myself and reconnect with myself and look back at all the examples of like where positive things turned out better than I ever anticipated. You know, so there was like this trusting universe. But what advice would you give for people who are similar like me struggling with this element of trust in your higher potential? <clears throat> Sure. How about I do one better and give you proof, Anya? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so I'm going to put you in a situation where you will answer this question. Yeah. Right? Um, go back to when you were a child. Right? Or mm -hmm. maybe let's do this. Have you, have you seen a toddler trying to walk? I have two kids. So, yes, I am very. <laughs> well, there you go. So you have kids. So and how old are they? Um, about 18 months and four, four and a half. So I'm assuming the four and a half one walks at 18 months is still trying yes, to Yes, they're, they're, they're both walking. They're both walking, yep. Both walking. So you go back to the time when the 18 months, um, what, what, what are their names, please? Nikolai is the 18 month old and Ruslan is the four and a half year old. So when Nikolai was, uh, and I'm only guessing, when Nikolai was yeah. 10 or 12 months old, 
mm-hmm. and trying to work. Um, you know, did Nikolai ever come to you and said, Mom, I've tried 30 times or 30,000 times in the last three months. I can't walk. I'm giving up. <laughs> no, no, no. Mm-hmm. Just keeps at it. Keeps at okay. It. So now you might argue, and in good faith, being the devil's advocate, now you might say, Gagan, they're child and they're pure, you know, but when we become adults, we we think differently. So I'm going to say, okay, let's just park that example. But we do have one example of persistence. That's how we mm-hmm. learn to walk. Mm-hmm. We do not give up, right? Yeah. We crawl, we fall. You know, on average, this is confirmed fact, on average, a child will fall about 100 to 300 times a day. Mm-hmm. That's over 90,000 times over a nine-month period, if that's how long a child takes to walk. You can divide that by three. 30,000 times in three months, Anya. <laughs> they, they just keep walking. That's proof number one. And like right. I said, you might argue they're young and they are, you know, they spawn, so they don't know, they don't know right. anything about fear, or shame, or field cousin. What are you talking about? So here's example number two. Do you drive? Oh, I do. Mm-hmm. So go back to day number one when you were driving. Do Were you perfect? On day nope. number one. No uh-huh. parking lot. Oh, no. Uh huh. And um, how long have you been driving for now? Um, 17 years. Mm hmm. So the level of competency you have now in driving, did you have that on day one? No. Now, I'm not going to ask you how old were you, but it's fascinating, right? I'm going to assume mm-hmm. you, were an, you were an adult when you started driving on day one. However, you chose uncertainty over unhappiness. Mm. I want you and your viewers to think about this, Anya. We're going real deep, real quick. Mm -hmm. Your mind, when you were driving, chose uncertainty over unhappiness. Unhappiness means that if you didn't drive, guaranteed unhappiness, guaranteed failure, because you wouldn't be able to do all the things that you were doing while driving, right? How are we tracking? You with me so far? Good. On it. Yeah. Now, I'm just keeping it real, very real, an example everybody will understand. You chose uncertainty because on day one, you had no certainty how you're going to drive on day two. Right Mm -hmm. so far? Right. On day two, you had no certainty on how you're going to drive on day three. Right. Now, I can tell you on day one, if you could feel how you could feel in year 17, you would learn to drive way, way quicker. I've just given you a secret formula. Right. Now, that's example number two. For for you and for people who swim, same story. Right. And we are adults. Like, okay, you can argue we are young when we learn to swim, and you can mm-hmm. argue we're just a toddler when we're learning to walk, but you can't argue with the fact that we all learn to drive when we are full-grown adults, right? Mm-hmm. It means we can choose uncertainty over unhappiness. We just choose not to. We allow the fear to get to us. And the reason the fear gets to us is because we don't take action. We don't take action because, as I said before, when we choose the fear of failure, it causes certain paralysis. And paralysis leads to keeping us safe. And our mind says, don't do anything. You're safe over here. But that also means you're not learning anything. If you listen to your mind at the time, there are people in the world who haven't learned driving because of this. Right. Very few, but there are people who haven't learned to drive because they told themselves they couldn't drive because it's difficult. If you tell your mind something over and over and over again, it'll start to believe you, Anya. Right. So when I was sharing that example of driving, if people can feel how the end product would look like. Let's talk about me. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to throw some numbers over there. If I want to earn $1.2 million net AUD, Australian dollars, surprise, surprise, <laughs> in 2024, and if I can feel how it looks mm-hmm. today, not then, today, right. the problem is we tell ourselves, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when I lose 10 kilos. I'll be happy when I pay my mortgage off. I'll be happy when I get married. I'll be happy Mm -hmm. when I buy that Volvo. I'll be happy when I have two kids. Right. 
I'm telling people how about if you enjoy the journey in the moment where you are right now. Right. We go back to step number six, acting the person you want to become. Almost every person, when they write step number five, which is the person they want to become, mm -hmm. there'll be things like, I want to be loyal, I want to be honest, I want to be rich, I want to, be, I want to have more time, I want to have mm -hmm. better relationships. Most of them will have that. How do I know? I've coached more than 150 people. Right. The thing is, when you're trying to feel that way, you're happy in the moment, not I'll be happy when. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's the problem. We take ourselves into the future. And here's a question to remain. Uh, here's, here's a step. Here's a formula for you to help remain in the present. You simply ask yourself, am I in the present? Or am I going into the future and fabricating something that doesn't exist? I'll tell you what, right. Anya, no one, no one has ever come back to me and said that question didn't work. Mm. And I'm going to be honest, I'm only two years into coaching. It's my 19th right. month. But after having coached more than 100 people, no one has come back to me and said the question didn't work. Because when you ask yourself, mm. am I in this present moment now? Or am I fabricating a result that doesn't didn't happen? The answer is always going to be, I'm fabricating something. So if mm -hmm. I tell myself, I'm going to earn $1.2 million, but my mind is saying, hey, you can't. Mm -hmm. The you can't portion is, how do you know? Right. You don't. Right. What if I have a joint venture with a big firm and they give me a coaching gig so, so big that that's alone it worth a million dollars? I don't know. Right. What, what if I find a marketing company that spreads my message like wildfire? The rest is going to be history, right? Right. I just don't know. And here's an example for you and your viewers. And this is going to sound silly, but have you ever gone to a coffee shop and ordered coffee? Of course. Seattle. We're Seattle area. <laughs> we run on coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm taking coffee example because Melbourne is the coffee capital of Australia, arguably the world. We get one of the best coffees here. When you go and order a coffee... Yeah. What happens, Anya? You pay, right? You pay. Right. Some places you pay later, but mostly you pay up front. And then you sit down. And my question to you and your viewers is, do you ever doubt the coffee is going to land on your table? Ever? No. no. Why is that? What if the chef has a heart attack? God forbid. What if there's an <laughs> earthquake? What if the sous chef and the chef have a fight? What if the coffee machine breaks down? In five seconds, I give you five examples. Right. All of this can happen. Fact. It has happened. In Melbourne, three months ago, there were three quakes. People were having coffee. They all left. Right. In yeah. some cases, before the coffee arrived. But we don't think about this, do we? No. We expect, we feel the coffee will arrive. That's the belief. So going back to your question about, Gagan, how do we believe? How do we believe this is going to happen? is simply believe in whatever you want to happen. Believe it's going to happen. Because what's the alternative? You've been trying the alternative for 50, 40, 20, 30 years. And right. look what's happened. You are where you are. Right. Right? And I mean it with a lot of love and compassion for your viewers. No disrespect meant. But I'm just keeping it real. Right. And now I'm going to tell you the reason why this happened. Two reasons. We stay in our comfort zone and the second thing, which Brian Tracy explained this, the best in the world, is learned helplessness. Yes. Yes. We have learned to become helpless. And don't even get me started on the school system and our education system, yeah. which doesn't yeah. even cover any of this. It doesn't cover about emotions. All we are taught is go get a job, get a mortgage, pay it off. Right. You'll be happy. What happens? We get a mortgage and we are unhappy because we keep thinking about where, when I'm going to pay the damn thing. Right. Right? Yeah. So we talked about why it happens, learned helplessness and comfort zone. We talked about how do you believe is follow the six steps, write it down, tell your mind it's going to happen, believe it's going to happen, feel. And when you feel, I guarantee you, if you really feel, the outcome of what you want December 2024 to look like. And for your viewers, if you really, really, really feel it, Anya, your body language will change. The mm -hmm. clothes you wear will change. The way you talk will change. The way you walk will change. Right. 
I'm talking about 360 transformation. If you feel it 50%, mm -hmm. some of the things will change. Mm -hmm. And I've given you an examples that we go to a coffee shop, we expect the coffee to arrive. We don't even like, it's like almost like demanding, right? Right. So I can, um, can I share again, a quick story with you? Of course, of course. And then we'll wrap up this question. This is something I realized recently because I keep journaling. I keep journaling. I keep journaling. And when I was 20 years of age, I decided I'm going to go abroad. So I was in India and I decided mm -hmm. I'm going to go abroad to study. My parents said to me unequivocally, like bold, idle caps, everything underlined. They said, you will not go because we do not have the money to send you. Because mm. I was from a lower middle class. Right. And um, talk about sadness, frustration, anger. <laughs> However, for some reason, and maybe because I was doing yoga at the time, I was big on spirituality, uh, which I forgot all about when I came to Australia and got busy with the corporate world. But going back, uh, for some reason, I kept trying. Mm. I kept trying and I kept trying. Now, I never expected my parents to help me, but I expected someone to help me. I expected the universe to help me for some reason, this, this higher power. And I kept trying and I kept going from one hotel to another because all these universities from Australia and Geneva and uh, mm -hmm. the US and France, they were coming to the New Delhi, uh, capital of India, where I was, and they kept doing their presentations in, in the big hotels. So I kept right. hopping from one hotel to another. After nine months, my mom came to me and said the magic words. She said, what do you need? Oh. No, I never thought about it until a couple of months ago when it hit me, right? This is why you should listen to your body and your mind and journal. And I think, Anya, what happened is because I didn't give up, right? And I was sort of expecting this to happen. I didn't say by who. That's the thing mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. Now, this is the law of separation. I teach laws in a separate group. There's 52 yeah. laws of spiritual business success. One of the laws is the law of separation. It talks about whatever your vision is. Right. In my case, my vision was to go abroad and do my MBA abroad yeah. overseas. And my strategy, my first strategy was to go to my parents. That failed miserably. Right. I didn't even know what my second, third, fourth, fifth strategy is. I just believed there was a strategy. That's why I kept going. And after nine months, maybe, maybe my parents saw my, assist, my persistence and my mother convinced my father and one thing led to another. And I landed in Australia a year and a half later after that. Beautiful. So it's full circle answering your question. How do you believe just get started? Right. Do not get stuck on the strategy. You know, if you talk about, if you go back to that seven up physicist, yeah. the guy who didn't make it in six attempts, he was stuck on a strategy, right? Yeah. The seven company were looking at the vision. Yeah. And they got it. Well, you can call it lucky. They got it. But you got to look at your vision. Your strategy can change. Right. But your vision should remain the same. And you just need to believe, write down, and just believe. Because the alternative is, if you don't, you're never going to get there. And can I share a little bit of my story? So as you know, I started this podcast because I got a lot of laid off from Meta. And I was like, this is my sign to not hold back. And the podcast started and the first day started zero views. <laughs> right, here I am, brand new podcast, um, work, you know, like a whole month. I did it, you know, on my own. Nobody watched. And I recorded like 10 hours before that of a five podcast premiere. Nobody watched. And that gives us like, this is, well, that was a reference point. Like, is this still worthwhile to me? Is it meaningful enough? And it was, and I continued. And now we are six months in, and we have almost 70 episodes. We interview people around the world. I nominated my podcast for two global awards in podcasting, which, you know. Wow. Uh, but I'm like, I'm going to go for it. And I, <laughs> I nominated my, my name to be speaking at a podcasting conference. This is me like five months into podcasting, not perfectly by myself. And I got selected. Over 600 people applied, and I got selected to do a speech. And this is my first public speech. <laughs> um, and I'm interviewing to do yeah. a TEDx talk on Friday. On Friday, because again, I just went for it. And I still have those doubts, to be transparent with you. But I also am leaning in. Like I'm at this point of, and I mentioned to you before we started, of like, you know, when you're just rocking and you rock forward, and like, 
I can do everything. The world is my oyster. And then there's like this fear that's like, are you sure? Are you sure? And this time I'm like leaning in as far as possible. Like, nope, this is my reality because I see it in other people because I dream big. My big dream. Can I share a few of my big dreams? Of course. Yes, please. Let's do this, right? My big dream is to obviously grow the podcast space, but it's bigger. I want to create this community of purposeful entrepreneurs around the world. And I'm working with my partner, Earl Talbot. We're creating retreats. We're creating our first retreat in June, which is crazy fast, right? It's crazy fast. But this vision I have is that the connections with people around the world, like the purposeful entrepreneurs that connect together, inspire each other, support, like there's magic in that. There's magic in people who are doing good work in the world, who want to grow, who inspire and motivate each other. So I will have this vision, that not just create a retreat, but create a community and create a global experience where you're traveling the world. And here you have entrepreneurs like going in small experiences, connecting offline between the retreats. And then we have like this retreat empire, right? <laughs> global retreat empire. And then we're training people, like all the people that want to do, all, a lot of incredible coaches want to create retreats. So I'm going to train people how to create retreats. And around that, I'm going to have the podcast, which connects and inspires entrepreneurs. Like that is my vision, like doing mm. all of this and seeing this beautiful power of connection and creating this amazing experience for people to like inspire themselves, inspire others, to educate themselves, educate others, and like experience the world throughout throughout this whole community and experience. So that's my big dream. And here I am having nothing really to show for it. I have no real experience, but like that's what's driving me. That's what's calling me. I see myself speaking daily at this huge stage. Like I see the lights, I see the audience, I see the faces. <laughs> Having done zero speeches right now. Um, but that's, that's me that's, being very mobile. And I feel like a little bit emotional just saying that. But yeah. that's what I see in my life. And I don't have any proof of it. But I'm leaning into that. If you if you keep believing it's going to happen, Anya. I, I strongly believe that someone was looking over me when I was 21 or 20 when this was happening. And someone just wanted to see me persist because the lesson is to have the courage to keep going because courage is not the absence of fear. It's not. Right. Courage is doing the things that are necessary despite the presence of fear. Right. You are allowed to feel fear. You are allowed to be scared. That's why we have to feel the emotions, but just do not let it get to you. It's very easy to say, I know, yeah. and I fail at this several times a week. <laughs> Right. But I feel good about it because it used to be several times a minute for me. Right. Right. So you got to look at how far you've come, because when you compare yourselves to others, you are actually damaging your own reputation in your mind. Comparison and judgment are the biggest demotivators in the world. Like they will just take yeah. you back years or decades. So going back to you, I just want to say congratulations and well done on believing in yourself and believing things can be done at a grand scale because you might as well. Yeah. We get one life, right? And you're right. following your passion and you can feel, I'm pretty sure the viewers can feel the energy in your voice even when you were sharing that. So good on yeah. you. That's yeah. fantastic. Thank you. you. You gave me the confidence to share that. And I want to also just wrap up, feel free to add anything you missed. How has your life changed? You shared the example where here you were on a career path where every opportunity was, you know, more money, you know, more of the quote unquote success that everybody looks for, but yet it wasn't fulfilling you. Like, no. so what has changed in the way you, you approach success in this pursuit now that you're doing it, you know, as a coach, how are the two paths different for you? So an example comes to mind. My recent client came to me and said, Gagan, I was going to commit suicide six months ago, but I'm not going to anymore. And he said, you are the reason. If that's not a big enough reason for me to keep going, I don't know what is. Because when I had my own suicidal attempts and depression in early 2021, you know, my aim became to save one Gagan at a time. And now I can confidently say I've saved one. Right. I'm not going to say I've saved many but I saved one. But when I heard those words, what do you think happened, Anya? Can that ha ever happen in a corporate job? Mm. You can make a difference, but I don't believe you can change lives unless you are in that line. Like me working for an electricity company or a telephone company, I don't think I can change lives the way I am now. 
right? So when you hear those, and this is the, the complete end of the spectrum, like an extreme mm. end of the spectrum. The, the other uh, spectrum is that um, I don't love my life anymore. I don't feel like waking up. I feel like hitting the snooze button 20 times before I wake up. These are real issues. When these people who come to me and three, six months later, they say, I've just got a promotion. I can't wait to jump up. I'm full of energy. When you hear those things, Anya, that's my own belief now rewarding me after a year and a half and saying, thank God that you kept going, Gagan. Thank mm -hmm. God. So it gives me the biggest ever job satisfaction they can be, like beyond mm -hmm. words could explain. I guess I want people to understand like what happens when you tr pursue a traditional path of like that success and money, right? Like mm -hmm. there's an end point where it just feels it, like you're saying, like it wasn't enough. There was something missing in it. And here you are doing something different because you redefine success. So I'm curious, like how uh, did you find, how did you find success then let's say, and why was it not working and how do you find success now? I believe because I was meant for something higher and yeah. You know, as I said to you before, you need to listen to your body, your mind, and your heart. And something was telling me, go and change your career. Go and look for a different path. Now, I didn't know at the time, but the universe or God created the different path for me by design. It gave me an opportunity to do it by choice. And I didn't, right? I didn't. I didn't listen. Maybe at the time I, I could have taken a break, a holiday cleared my mind, journaled, maybe I could have realized this sooner. The universe created that path for me. Mm -hmm. So I had no choice. I had to take that, that path. And now I realize what a powerful path it is. Now, at the time, success for me was money, fame, title, authority. Right now, success for me is how powerfully can I be of service to the person who's mm -hmm. sitting in front of me. It doesn't matter if they're virtual. For example, right now, my only and only aim is how can I be present 100% for Anya and your viewers? Mm -hmm. I'm not making it up. That's the person I've become. It wasn't always like that. It's very hard mm -hmm. because when you're talking to someone, you have 50 things going in your back, in your head. What am I going to do after this? Where are the groceries going to come from? And where's my next client going to come from? What about my next meeting? Right. Am I going to be late? What am I wearing? Am I looking okay? <laughs> am I smelling yeah. good? You know? <laughs> you smell great. <laughs> so we, we, we have so many thoughts. You know, we talk about 60,000 yeah. thoughts a day. So one thing I've developed is for me, the success, for me, success is serving others as powerfully as I can hmm. and leaving the rest to a higher universe. You talk about belief. I do it every day, every hour. Yeah. So... I'm still not sure if I've answered your questions correctly, <laughs> uh, but I'm hoping I have. Otherwise, feel free to ask again, Anya. You're good. I, I didn't I didn't have it clearly articulated in my head, so I think that the message that you came across is exactly what I was looking for. So thank you for uncovering it with me together. And Gagan, well. you've been you've been so generous for your time. I love just everything about conversation. I didn't expect where it was going to go, but you so you beautifully guided us through a framework, through your own story through inspiration, through your personal transformation. And I believe all of our listeners could gather something and relate, you know, some part of their journey, you know, where are they blocked? Where are they fearing? What can they do? You know, especially now we're starting a new year, a great time to reflect on like, Hey, where's my life at right now? Is it how I want to live? And how can I start living that in the now? Like what I want, um, can I start embodying that right now? And let's see what happens. You know, here we are, it's going to come out the 6th of February, start doing these six steps and let us know, you know, what those look like. What is the future you that you're going to embody now look like? And let us know in a year uh, how that transformation took place. And you were delightful here at Right Off Track. We wrap up with three rapid fire questions. So let me know when you're ready and I will shoot those away. Let's go. Okay. Oh, one sec. Um, what is one book that you'd recommend to all entrepreneurs? And this is the, okay. There's two actually come to my mind, but I'll, I'll say the first one. Uh, my favorite topic is courage. So it's got to be Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. I'm very jealous of Ryan Holiday because he was all of 23 years of age when he wrote that book. Number one bestseller. I don't know how many languages it's been written in. 
um, yeah. amazing book. So it's um, for all ages and for all entrepreneurs, no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. An amazing book. Obstacle is the way by Ryan Holiday. Um, do, um, is there? Do you have a favorite journaling practice that you would recommend to others? Um, yes, it's called Morning Journal Pages by Julia Cameron. So mm -hmm. you can just Google it, Julia Cameron Morning Journal Pages, and it's an amazing practice to get your junk out. When I say junk, I mean all the negative mm -hmm. thoughts because we have them all day long. But if you yeah. actually write it down and get them out first thing in the morning after your spiritual practices or your gym or whatever your personal success routine mm -hmm. is, then you will find you have a far better productive day as compared to not doing it. Test it. I love that. So beautiful. So actionable. And finally, in the positive sense, going off track is? The answer to that would be to do the thing that's necessary. Have the courage to go and do the thing you fear the most mm -hmm. despite the presence of fear. And mm -hmm. I can almost say guarantee or challenge that you're probably ending up surprising yourself. Just okay. do it. Just don't don't trust me. And I say to all my clients and all my and all my groups, do not trust whatever mm -hmm. I say. Test it. Belief is based on hearing other people, but knowing only comes through action. That's so right. I encourage you just take Gagan's words. What are you fearing right now? And I'm asking myself right now the same thing. What can I do today to take action on something I fear right now? And I hope that you listen to this. You also take those steps and make this the best year yet and see what you can fully like and see where your life will take you when you start living outside your comfort zone and going off track. Again, thank you so much. This was a fantastic interview. I've learned so much. My heart was pounding with fear, but excitement everywhere that I was listening to you. And to all of our listeners, I'm excited to hear what you took away. Share with us your insights, your dreams, your aspirations, your fears that you're tackling. And as always, let's take over the world together, right off track. Thank you for joining us, Gagan. It was a pleasure. I loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you.